With this generation trying to reimagine the horror genre, whether it be through movies or video games, do you ever get kind of pissed off when you're watching a horror movie that comes out of nowhere but then continues similar tropes where you're like looking at those characters thinking to yourself, to yourself like, do these characters, have, have they ever watched, in the universe that they live in, have they ever watched a horror movie and taken into account the things they need to do in order to survive? Well, this time, you get to play as those idiot characters. Yay. Hey everyone, David here. So it's time for a very rare review in which I get to review something that's very concurrent among gaming. Which is a game that everybody's talking about called Until Dawn. One that I've been hearing about for quite some time. It's been in development for a really long time. For I think ever since like 2011 or so when it was first unveiled and now finally with the release of the game. Prior to the gargantuan release that was Metal Gear Solid 5 and I think it just got kind of buried, no pun intended. But... People are still talking about it, and then after hearing upon the type of genre that it it, it kind of belongs in, and how how the narrative transpires, it sounded like it was a short enough game for me to go ahead and red box. I looked at it; it was like eight and a half hours or so, and I'm like, okay, it's time to get it, you know, through red box. So I red boxed the game. I played it in a matter of a couple of days or so, and so here I am to finally talk about. Until Dawn. And in Until Dawn, eight teenagers decide to return to a winter mountain lodge a year after a tragic event unfortunately took two of their friends and they decide to go back in the hopes of getting some kind of closure, trying to, try to remember the good times. However, those good times, they don't last for very long because things start to turn very gruesome and evil very fast and very brutally. It sounds like a generic horror movie premise. I know it. You know, the, uh, teenagers stuck in a cabin in the woods. There's a killer or something out there. They're trapped inside. No cell service for some strange reason. Uh, things just go bad at every turn, and you see them getting picked off one by one. But then somebody came up with the idea over at the developers of Supermassive Games and thought. What if we turn that into a game? How come we never thought about this? And maybe there's been some indie develop uh, developments here and there, but this is the first AAA title to tackle that kind of premise for a video game. And it sounds very interesting. It's something that feels rather unique and fresh despite the overused uh, 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 plot with movies. Now, how about we bring it onto our video games? And that makes it very interesting. You have to play as these characters and make those choices that can have what this game uh, uses a butterfly effect amongst the story and can decide whether or not somebody lives or dies. And I think that's very clever. And it tackles it in the same kind of way that we've seen other games tackle this kind of um, this kind of point and click adventure type of. Uh, type of trope, it, it, games like Beyond Two Souls or um, Heavy Rain, anything from Quantic Dream where you got this character or characters that you get to play as and you mainly navigate through, you interact with the story it, it, and the move. It, the game kind of turns into an interactive movie in which you get to make certain decisions but, but for the most part you're watching it and navigating through the motions while at the same time trying to become invested with these characters and the story. And Until Dawn tries to do the same thing only this time with a much more uh, uh, horrific genre. Beyond Two Souls kind of did that, but it tackled more of the supernatural and, and more of the suspense side of that genre until Dawn knows what it is and it, and it kind of uh, takes advantage of that so that you are in for the horror ride that it is. And so since you're playing as these characters and for the most part you're watching them interact with one another and sure you get to make certain decisions for them, whether it be through some through something uh, verbally or something action-related, you're watching these characters, and so the game has the responsibility of making you want to care about, about these characters so that when you're faced with a very crucial decision that is literally a matter of life and death, you care. You're left there wondering, just, oh my god, what am I going to do? And fortunately, most of these characters are genuinely compelling. You care about them. They're very layered. In fact, the beginning of the game takes its time to make you get to know these characters. Instead of rushing into the action, running in, uh, rushing into the, the horror and the suspense and all the blood and guts and all that stuff, it takes its time to say, okay, this is the, this character, this is what they are, and now here they're going to have their little scene to in interact with the other characters so that you get the gist of what they're all about. And I really respect that. I really like that the game takes its time to 
ha have you be invested with these characters, even if you may not become a huge fan of all of them. I mean, trust me, there's a couple of there's a couple of uh, assholes and bitches amongst this group that you're just like, oh my god. But what I have to commend the game on is the fact that they never try to make you like them. They understand that in life there's characters who are very nice and compelling and then there's characters that are just, you know, they're mean. Uh, they, they may have certain redeeming qualities about them, whether it be being smart and getting themselves out of st situations, but then they have to come across as very uh, sar uh, sarcastic or condescending. But that's just how some people are. And sometimes that, the uh, situations that these characters find themselves in brings the worst out of them. So you get to see these characters um, transform from the beginning where they're just being teenagers to d taking these drastic actions to get, you know, uh, to get out of death's way and I like that the game progresses that and even if you may not be a huge fan of out of all of them it still recognizes what the, this game needs to be strong at so that it gets the point of cross of making it a very thrilling game and that is its characters and the okay oh, it's kind of creepy that my camera recognizes that as, as an actual face you know has face recognition and it actually anyways um what I also enjoyed about the story for this game is the interesting take the, uh, on the classic horror genre of having these kids stuck in a cabin in the woods and ha as it transpires certain things just start popping up and this sense of mystery is kept up and it reaches this peak where you're just like oh my god what is gonna happen I don't know it's very unpredictable but sadly for me it kind of fizzles out now the main reason why I believe it fizzles out is not because of where it ends up at the end I enjoy those elements that it ended up on it's just that it kind of it, it the story kind of reaches this fork in the road and it decides to choose one and then the other kind of goes on for a little bit and then that one fizzles out and then it, it turns into something kind of different into a different type of horror genre because under horror you got different subgenres and I'm not going to mention what they are because I feel that alone is a little bit of a spoiler and I'm going to try to stay away from that but it starts off in one subgenre of the of the horror genre and then it turns into another by the end of the game. And I kind of wish they would have just picked one and stuck with what, that one and kind of gave us bits and pieces of the mystery as it went along rather than to kind of lead us astray with this one thing and then turn into another. Even though that thing itself also had some interesting things, one of which is actually at the beginning and kind of ties in with the end so it's not like they it, it's not like they they came up with this other thing halfway through writing the script and they're like oh let's just put it in there let's go ahead and take this little detour it doesn't feel that half-assed i just personally wish they could have stuck with just one angle towards the 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 horror element of this story although i will say that in between missions there's this little segments that i really enjoy not only because of uh, a certain actor that appears here and there, but also just how they tied in with the actual story and flesh things uh, way more than they than they even needed to, and I, re I I commend them for that. You may have heard a friend who's very enthusiastic about movies say this here and there recently, but in case you haven't, I'll tell you this right now: the big problem with horror movies, and I mean mainly with horror movies, that we hardly get horror games these days. I mean, we we rely on our Resident Evils or Silent Hills. And I don't even know if there's going to be a future for either of those franchises these days. But that's why we got games like Until Dawn. But going back to movies. One of the biggest problems with horror movies these days is that they rely on something a, a little bit too much. And that is, of course, <coughs> the jump scare. The jump scare in which they mainly found in, horror, in, a, in a found footage movies where, you, you know, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and then boom, and then it happens. When it comes to a movie... It relies too much on that to get those to get that jump scare out of you, so that oh hey look you got scared yeah because you something just jumped out of me, something that is something that makes a horror movie or game in this in this sense genuinely scary is the atmosphere the the, the feeling of dread the, the you know just walking around having a character walk around and just investigate investigating a certain environment without anything just jumping out and making you feel uneasy is scary enough and i feel like until dawn really nailed that with the location that they decided to have this the, the game story take place in uh it kind of reminds me an awful lot of the thing john john carpenter's the thing as well as other uh, uh, uh other stories from both movies and video games and it definitely pays tribute to that 
Uh, plus, we got the t we got the classic lodge up in the mountain, and then there's something going on around them, and you got the teenagers stuck there, no cell service. But it pulls it off very well, not only with its lighting. I mean, the lighting in this game is really great, and the sound effects. Oh my God, the sound effects is very unstunning. Not since Dead Space, another horror video game. Uh, has sound effects been really effective to deliver that horror and that suspense as well as the score it's very Hitchcockian it you know, it reminded me an awful lot of game uh, of movies from Hitchcock like Psycho or Vertigo uh, heavy uses on violins and you know striking them like <laughs> yeah like like that's just it, it's classic and it works and what can also sell that horror are the performances from your actors seeing the reactions on their face and them being terrified that can also make you feel terrified, and I feel like we got some really great performances from a stellar cast that's featured in this game. As you play it, you're probably going to recognize a good amount of actors in this game. You may not know their n name by heart, but you'll look at their face, being that this game is trying to go for that Uncanny Valley type of, uh, type of look to their, to their characters. You're going to look at some faces and be like, oh hey, it's that guy, oh, oh hey, it's that person from that one movie. I'm not going to say specific names except for our main actress here, Hayden Panettiere, but then there's others that you're going to look at and be like, oh, I know him or her from that one other thing. and But they're not big names like Willem Dafoe or Ellen Page from Beyond Two Souls. They're just recognizable actors that fit with their character. And again, they gave great performances. My only complaint about how this game looks and sounds is that sometimes they went for that uncanny valid a, a little bit too much that a wonky animation just, <laughs> just makes things look a little bit too weird. Especially whenever a character smiled. I, or, or just winced or something they did some kind of facial expression that required them to show off their teeth whenever they did that it just looked weird because it just looked like they're it, it looked like the terminator trying to smile from terminator 2 and recently terminator genesis where he's just like So I already mentioned that the type of game that Supermassive Games was trying to go for is something very similar amongst the vein of Beyond Two Souls or Heavy Rain. I'm even going to say The Walking Dead where you got your character, you walk them through the story and you interact with certain parts of the story but for the most part you're a spectator. And he uh, moments here and there you'll actually take part in choices that matter as well as some dialogue options and the occasional action that requires getting your character out of a si sticky situation. And being that it's that type of game that's very minimal in actual gameplay, it relies on certain conventions that you've come to expect from that type of subgenre. However, what I feel needs to be addressed is the fact that I genuinely felt uneasy navigating through the game, regardless of what character I was playing as, because of the atmosphere, because of the way it was all executed, from the music to the sound, and the way uh, um, everything, uh, all of that comes together. The basic actions that are very uh, a little bit trite with this subgenre that plagued other games like Beyond Two Souls or Heavy Rain, where you got quick time events. Oh, gr you know, press this button, hold this down, you grab the door, you open the door, press the left stick in any direction to move your character, and of course, when something gets very frenetic, you got little bu button icons that appear here and there, and you got to press them at the right time so that you can go without a hitch. And this game t it takes all those things and does them once again. However, because of the the presentation of the game, how all that comes together with the music and the atmosphere. I genuinely felt uneasy navigating through the world and I actually got a sense of terror. It, it, the best analogy that I can use is that this felt like a jack-in-the-box and you winding up the jack-in-the-box. You know that thing's gonna pop up and scare the bejesus out of you. You're seeing it coming, which is why jump scares in this game actually work versus a movie because when you when you're watching a movie you're like okay it's coming it's coming it's coming it's at their at their own pace so like it's coming all right i can already tell because of the way you're moving the camera and the way the music is, sw is swelling up you know that it's gonna come oh there it is not scared whereas here again like a jack the box you're winding it you're controlling it you're controlling the pace and you know that the, the scare is coming the music would even tell you but the fact that you are taking part in it, you, you know, when you're doing a Jack of the Box, you're kind of like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. 
dun, dun, dun. <laughs> God. Until Dawn is like the biggest video game Jack in the Box ever, where even the music kind of goes, but then when you walk away from a certain area, that music goes, and I'm like, oh my God, there's going to be a scare. There's going to be some kind of scare, but the fact that I'm partaking in it is scary enough. And I feel like Until Dawn excelling at that is a definite plus. If I had one other thing or maybe two other things to say about the gameplay is that it did get a little repetitive with those jump scares, mainly in the middle where you have an awful lot of characters without getting into the story. Some characters spend a little bit more time on in the outdoors, in the wilderness, that kind of thing, investigating certain things, and the game would then take advantage of that environment to just riddle it with jump scares. Oh my god, it's a deer! Oh my god, it's a squirrel! Oh my god, it's a something! And just a, a jump scare would happen bit after bit, bit. And don't get me wrong, it would get me because of the fact that it's a game. I'm navigating through the place, I'm taking part in the action, so it would get me. It's just the fact that they were doing it a little too often that I was like, okay guys, I get it. Actually, bring me something that is that is supposed to be scary to not just me, but also the characters and mean something to the story. Do it. And the gameplay, much like with the story, changes by the end to where it kind of started resembling a certain other game that people didn't were a little disappointed with that came out earlier this year that was also a PlayStation 4 exclusive. I'm not going to say anything more than that, but... It's a game that rem that its gameplay reminded me an awful lot of this one by the end. Now, of course, the occasional interactivity that you have in this game wouldn't really matter if you didn't have choices that mattered. And for the most part, they do. Because this game uh, it, it has been advertised about how the choices you make have this butterfly effect where th something will happen and then that thing will affect something else. And you can call it the domino effect or the butterfly effect, but by the end, things could... Everybody's playthrough is going to be very different. In fact, there's videos up on YouTube that are like 30 to, uh, thirty minutes to almost an hour long to g showing all of the different outcomes that this game could have from the character's deaths to just certain things by the end, certain, uh, you know, things that happen mainly during the end credits, but but certain outcomes could be different than, uh, uh, than uh, other people's playthroughs. And that's really interesting, really awesome, and definitely a reason to pick the game up or rent it or like I did. However, I say for the most part because here and there, certain dialogue options are mainly just there to kind of um, breathe some in insight into what you would have chosen in that situation and just to hear different dialogue, di dialogue, dialogue uh, uh, segments from these characters. And ever so often, I, I don't know for certain, I don't know... Uh, the, the extent of this, how many times this happens throughout the game, uh, at least at the time of this review, maybe I'll check it out later on on YouTube, I don't know, but I do know that at least once, uh, because of some of the material that I've, uh, that I've watched after playing the game, which I'll get to in a second, thanks to that material, as well as my own personal choices I made in this game, I know that there's at least one, maybe two choices you make in this game, that end up with the same kind of outcome. Like, in fact, towards the end of the game, I was thinking to myself about that very first choice, that very first drastic choice I needed to make at, in, during the prologue for this game, and I was like, man, that could have ended up a completely, this, that could have been completely different knowing this new thing that I knew about the story by the end of this game, only to realize, due to some bonus stuff that you gain at, uh, after playing the game, that that wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. It would have been a similar. It would have been the same outcome, only with a slight little twist. But it would have been, the essentially the same exact thing. And I, and that got me thinking: how many of these actual these the decisions actually had a, a butterfly effect, like the game kept telling me the decisions would have. So I don't know the full extent of that, but I I am a little dubious about whether or not this the game actually has different choices that matter or it just leads you to believe that it does so. So what bonus stuff exactly are you talking about, David? Well, I'm glad you asked, even though you totally didn't. Uh, basically, throughout the game, you got certain little collectibles, except they're not collectibles, because almost every game has little bonus doodads here and there you can find, little treasures, that kind of thing. But what I liked about that sort of material in this game is that it actually fleshes out the story for the game. There's certain uh, clues and certain items that you discover and it actually gives you some insight into what happened in this mountain, what happened a year ago with your friends, and it ties it all you know together and I really liked it. Amongst that, you also got these totems 
that I'm not going to mention too much about them, but let's just say they do affect some of the choices you make in the game. And once you complete the game, you also got these bonus uh, behind the scenes videos, which is where I got that whole thing about the choices, maybe or maybe or maybe not being actual choices that mattered. But you do unlock some bonus content that that give you some insight in the make, into the making of the game, as well as it let, it letting you play through some of the episodes of the game, so that in, in case you wanted to go back and save a certain character or just change the outcome and see how things would have turned out, you can do that as well. Until Dawn could have been a neat but somewhat generic horror movie. However, considering that it's a game, it adds a whole new dimension to the whole thing. And I'm glad that they made it into a game. I'm glad that somebody took the genre that has been touched upon before, mainly by Quantic Dream, but t t mixed it with something else that a lot of people kind of, you know, fantasized about a little bit. Like, oh, what if you could do this? And, and somebody even pointed out that maybe they could tackle a creature feature like The Thing where it's a video game and you need to guess who is who and it's a multiplayer like Evolve or something like that and you need to guess who the actual thing is and it, you know somebody will get a clue that somebody else didn't and that could lead to endless possibilities for very fun games and I can definitely see where they were coming from with Until Dawn trying to put you in into the shoes of of these characters and trying to decide trying to get into your psyche and try to figure out what you would have done be, if you were to be in a horror movie, one thing's for certain, do not have sex. Because I love that this game does kind of touch upon that, and ever so often, you get the feeling that they might be a little self-referential. A couple of terms were mentioned here and there, especially when a scene in the in the game happened that reminded me an awful lot of another horror uh, a property, which was a tad bit distracting, but then that becomes something else, and kind of ties in with the complaint I had about the game dropping something and then becoming another thing but nevertheless aside from those issues amongst others until dawn is a fun little horror game that i can that definitely puts supermassive games name on the map and i look forward to seeing what else they do but for now until dawn is a game that is good on its own right but i think it could have had better it's some broader potential to be even better so i give until dawn a low 8 out of 10 Definitely recommend picking it up uh, at a bargain bin price, but if you're a bit hesitant, I wouldn't blame you if you were to go ahead and rent it through Gamefly or Redbox. So let me know what you guys thought of Until Dawn. If you have played it but you have not and would like to purchase the game after watching my review, then be sure to use the link in the description below. It would really help me out a lot. And please let me know if you do stumble upon the game, whether it be buying it or renting it, anything, would you actually play it Until Dawn? Because the game is short enough to do so. It's eight, well, short enough being a relative term with video games because it's about eight hours six or seven hours if you were to speed run it and not investigate every nook and cranny considering it's a horror game so you want to avoid some of those jump scares because it really can be a game in real time you start playing it like around 10 or 11 o'clock at night beat it by six o'clock seven o'clock when the sun's rising and therefore the the time just matches and that would have made for a rather engrossing experience. I ever so often get the feeling that maybe I should have done that, but there's this thing called life that gets in the way of that. But anyways, let me know what you guys thought. Would you be willing to do that with Until Dawn? And I'll see you guys next time.